Okay, time to behave and be nice. It's all it's all um, on recording now. Um, how is everyone doing? Good, sort of. <laughs> good. Well, it's good to see everyone here. Um, uh, we were going to start with a video on the kickoff, but Julie's not here yet. So um, let me see. I just so one thing I want to share is that our next meeting will not be until May 9th because there are so many holidays and spring breaks and stuff going on. So we'll send out a blast, of course, but I wanted you to be aware. Um, so May 9th, do you think, will people be ready for um, an in-person meeting by then? Catherine's saying yes. Sarah's not sure. I heard there is another variant, like something like B2. Did you guys hear that? Yes, I spoke to someone who has it today. And oh, no. And hoping that it's not in my family. Uh huh. Okay, um, Julie's just logging in now. Um, somebody that some of us have been um, petitioning with has it. Actually, I'm not sure anybody in this group. Um, I'm, I'm stuck between wanting to tell and, and holding confidentiality. Ooh. Well, one of them tweeted it, so. I don't know if there's well who tweeted it. Oh, Grace Lee just tweeted. Okay, that she, that's who it was. She tested positive for COVID. Oh, so if anyone's so. been around Grace a lot for the last five days, please test. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Jeremy. <laughs> mm -hmm. He's yeah, he's not quite on. Yeah, I didn't really. If she already tweeted it, then um, uh, it's yeah, it's worrisome because there is supposed to be the new variant, and so I. Great. You know what, I take back the question. We'll wait to see what happens, if we're gonna have another spike or not, or if this is just you know a lot of hoo-ha, it's just impossible to tell. Um, yeah, it's just too hard to tell. So um, let's talk about petitioning. Yay. <laughs> and um, we were gonna start with um, a video of the kickoff. So as soon as Julie comes on, we will do that. Many of you know, many of you were there at the kickoff event a week ago Sunday. We've also done some tabling events. We have another tabling event coming up this Saturday um, from 11 to 2 in front of Seward Park Extension, provided the weather cooperates. Um, last Yesterday was freezing out, so petitioning was hard. But we need, um, there's Julie. So she's prepared to do it. Uh, we'll start with that and get the energy up before we, uh, all right. Uh, I'm also going to make um, Julie co-host. No, not co Catherine Frida, I keep doing the wrong ones. Yes, okay. Julie, do you want to start? We are just starting to talk about petitioning. Do you want to start with the video from the kickoff? Yeah, okay, yep, I'm setting it up. Okay, good. So I just made you co-host. Thank you. Um, but while she's setting up, tell me when, when you've got it set up. I, I just want to say some more things about petitioning. We are okay. meeting at Grand Street Guild on Sunday, this coming Sunday from five to seven. So please come and bring your petitions. That's when we'll make sure we have as many as we need and all the election districts are covered, et cetera. Until that time, please go door knocking in your tower. If you spend like two hours of door knocking, you should be able to get 20 signatures. In total, we need 500. So if everybody just pitches in and does that much, we'll get through this. That would be really great. And if, um, you know, especially people who are on the petition, people who are on county committee, going up for county committee, or judicial delegates or state committee, please do the petitioning. Um, so if we're gonna count them on Sunday, if we don't have enough, we're gonna do another blitz about petitioning. I'd rather not do it. I know you'd rather not hear it. So let's just get up the energy and finish it by Sunday. Um, that would be great. So the, the, the spot is 131 Broom Street, it's Grant Street Guild's uh, community room. Five to seven, did I say that? 
Okay, Julie, go. This was the beginning. Can you see my screen? I've never done yep. this before. Yep. Okay, here we go. No music? there's no sound no somebody sing along Mark Pay, our new city council member, the Around, yeah, this is what you know. This was all you know, being out there, talking to your neighbors, educating them on the issues of our district and why the people on this ballot, on this petition, are the people that are going to fight those, right? When there's like the traffic on Grand and Clay, uh, the displacement issues that we're facing in our communities, right? These are people who have been fighting with us. Jamani's been fighting for years, Eddie Lassen has been fighting for years. Josh has been active in the streets, Victoria as well. And so these are the people that we support. And so we should support them. Right? We are having support of Grand Street. Uh, you took a risk with me when I ran for uh, the governor. I was out there. I mean, I've been public advocate. So I'm thankful so much for all the folks who are making sure we get on the ballot. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
know, I, I am so, of course, as you all know, I was going to wear my 100% affordable Bible trade center, but that was not my idea. It was a community that came to me and said, we need this. We really need this. And we need you to fight for this. And so that's how these things build and they start. So this, what we're doing today, the petitioning, the talking to people, talking to voters is important for us to get the vote, for them to know that we are here for them. But it's also for them to know that they do have a voice, that there's someone there listening to what they're saying. And so thank you all so much because you do this every day as community leaders. And like I said, it's truly the community leaders that inspire me. So thank you. And let's go. <laughs> so I think it'll be a big change. So anyway, I'm going to try to keep this to 60 seconds. Thanks for having me. Um, it's so nice to be out here with uh, my second favorite Democratic color. <laughs> Okay, so you want to stop sharing the screen? Um, so, oh. <laughs> um, let's see. Yeah, it does. You yep, you have to go down to the bottom and stop screen share. Uh, okay. Oh, okay. Okay. See, share screen, you have to stop it. Uh, I wonder if you could put the link in the chat because the video is actually much better than it came across. And people might want to see it and really get what everybody was saying. Right. I've seen the video. It looks great. I'm not really, I guess maybe it doesn't translate to Zoom very well. But thanks for doing that, Julie. No problem. Mm -hmm. um, oh. Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. So, I mean, I, I love, <clears throat> I actually love what Nydia Velasquez said about we can't go telling other people how to be democratic if we're not out there doing the work of being Democrats, the democratic work ourselves. I was really inspired by her. <clears throat> um, all of our elected people and candidates came. Catherine was actually there. She came after we did that. So we didn't get to, um, and we didn't get to put her in. Grace Lee also came later. Um, who, who knew everyone was going to come at the crack of 11, but they did. So, <clears throat> so anyway, please, please get out and petition and let's get this done. Let's really be able to send them in, get our people on the ballot and then focus on the primary in June. Uh, Jeremy, you have anything you wanna to add to that? Uh, sure, just to say, I've, I mean, I, <clears throat> I know uh, some of the door knocking uh, sometimes makes people a little nervous, but I've had uh, a really, particularly nice time this year knocking on doors because I feel like it's the first time in a couple of years I'm allowed to. Uh, and I, I did my whole section uh, last week with Grace. We had a great time, had some really good conversations. These are really uh, meaningful conversations for candidates to have face-to-face. -face. 
and then also if it's just if it's just you talking to your neighbors and making sure they know. Thank you. Okay, so uh, we'll move on with our agenda. Um, if by the way, on the the blast that came out yet last night, there's a link for if you want to do petitioning. Go to the link and sign up. We'll make sure to get you petitions and get you set up. Um, okay, Bill, you want to give us a traffic update? Sure. Uh, can I? Uh, can you set me up to share the screen? Because I have. Oh, okay. Two sorry. Things to show. I've got a lot of co-hosts tonight. Bill, could you do traffic and weather, please? <laughs> <laughs> okay, your co-host. Uh, okay, thank you. So let me uh, let me get this here. Uh, let me uh, share my screen. I don't think I have any sound, but I'm gonna. Say so. Okay, let me go back. I don't want that yet. I want this. Okay. Uh, so this is uh, for today. Uh, a bunch of stuff. Uh, so far, we've had uh, 44 people sign up to traffic working group. Uh, 12 since our last uh, Grand Street Dems meeting. I've also. Uh, I've been building uh, more of a focused sort of action volunteer list. So we have 15 people so far. The idea with this is that uh, we will need people who are willing to do even minor tasks like file a 311 complaint, make a phone call, send an email, uh, post something on Twitter or Facebook or whatever social media they like to maybe showing up at community board meetings, et cetera, et cetera. And so uh, I'll uh, show you what that survey is in a, in a minute. Actually, I'll go to it right now. It's I just have to uh, find which browser I had it in. Sorry, I had so many things open. I, I thought I had a few more minutes before uh, I, I had a talk. Let's see if no, is this it? Sorry. Uh, yeah, it's here. Okay. So basically what it is, it's uh, uh, this will reclaim our, our you know neighborhood from this drive through a uh, photo by uh, Daisy Paez, who's overlooking right uh, from uh, the, uh, uh, the the Grant, the, uh, I can never remember the name, I'm sorry, the Grand Street Guild. And that's the corner of uh, Clinton and Grand. That's uh, Trader Joe's over here on the, the entrance over here. So, uh, but you can see what this mess is. Uh, essentially the survey is uh, asking people what they would be willing to do. Do a 311 phone call, like I was mentioning, an email, go to a public meeting. It could be a community board meeting, it could be the seventh precinct community council. If we ever have something like a rally or a press conference, which we've been talking about doing, but not yet, because we need to make sure we have a lot of people uh, to see if people would do that, or if they'd like to come, if they'd be willing to do an organizing meeting, whether it be Zoom or not. Uh, or petitioning on the street. Daisy Paez has, has convinced me that we should do petitioning on the street. We're gonna wait till all the election petitions are done so that we don't confuse people and burn them out. Uh, but we're planning to start that also. The weather will be a little nicer than it was yesterday. Uh, and then people can sign up, uh, you know, just some information we need, uh, everything's optional. So that's basically the idea that we get people to sign up. And like I said, we have 15 people to do that. Uh, I haven't asked people to do any specific actions yet because I really want a lot of folks and, I'm, uh, to, and I'll talk about one thing that we're going to do in a second. Oh, uh, we'll see this in a second. Okay. Uh, I'd have to say this is really a, a good organizing opportunity for the Grand Street Dems to get people involved with knowing about the Grand Street Dems. I don't say it's a Grand Street Dem project. I tell people they don't even have to vote to be in the traffic working group, but uh, it's, it's sort of a good way for us to get recognition if you get people in, involved. And I'm pretty sure that quite a few people at this meeting are also not on the list. So that would be good if uh, some of you can sign on. So let me tell you what's happened. Uh, community Board 3, we have a couple uh, members of, uh, who are uh, on the Community Board 3 Transportation, Public Safety and Environment Committee, uh, Lee Berman and uh, Michelle Coopersmith. Uh, they actually did a great job in softening up this the CB3 committee uh, about an issue that the DOT had where they wanted to basically not do much at all, except they were going to send the traffic that's currently on Grand Street, instead of allowing it to turn right onto Clinton, they're going to send it down to 
uh, Norfolk and have that traffic turn right onto Norfolk. And, and they claim that would speed up things, allow for 13% more cars. We were saying, you guys don't get it. We don't want more cars. Uh, and, and most of the other plan was pretty uh, weak tea, as you say. Uh, they were essentially uh, weren't providing any provisions for bus lanes, for pedestrian and bicyclist safety. They claimed that whatever changes they had would be self-enforcing. Some of our colleagues on the traffic working group uh, tell me that there are some features that could be done the street that could make it self-enforcing, except if someone really wants to just ignore them, they could. Okay. So uh, what we did was uh, we, the, on the, in February 8th, the transportation committee, the CB3, actually rejected the proposal. As I mentioned, of course, Michelle and Lee pushed it. It also turned out the acting chair of that committee had just moved from the East Village to Grand Street. And so we got to witness the mayhem in person. Uh, so that helped. Uh, so they rejected the proposal. Uh, they basically said that they wanted uh, DOT to come up with a more holistic uh, plan for the neighborhood. Uh, it also turned out two weeks later, they did a great job of whipping boats on the full community board, which I was really sh surprised at because I tend to think the community board acts as a rubber stamp lots of times, but they got the full community board to reject uh, the DOT proposal. Uh, and um, uh, I can send you the stuff. I don't want to, you know, take up the time reading through the whole proposal. Uh, but it, it was pretty thorough in terms of uh, asking for some robust changes. And I'll talk about that in, them in a second. However, uh, and Chris uh, Marte will probably talk about this when he shows up because he's met with the uh, Borough of Manhattan Transportation Commissioner, who tends to be sort of more of a technical traffic guy and not a, an elected official. And we think it's likely that the DOT will just ignore the CB3's position and still go ahead with trying to make Norfolk Street uh, the, the way for cars on Grand Street to get to the Williamsburg Bridge. They keep on saying, well, it used to be that way. It used to be that way. And we said, yes, that was before Essex Crossing was built. And there was nothing but parking lots there. And there weren't two truck docks uh, right on Norfolk Street now uh, and all these pedestrians. So uh, we're thinking that we might have to lean more towards uh, not the Manhattan Borough Commissioner, who again, like I said, is more of a technocrat, but go make uh, complaints directly to uh, Idanis Rodriguez, who is the citywide commissioner and is a political appointee. And as a politician, is probably a little bit more sensitive to uh, uh, constituents complaints. So I'm hoping that we can get more people on the action volunteer list so that when it comes to simple things like emails and stuff, we can count on people to deluge these guys and make them really rethink of it. Okay. Now, having done that, I want to just show you a couple of things that are really cool. Based on a lot of the feedback we had, the traffic working group, we came up with a clear set of goals. And immediate past president, president Jeremy Sherber, a friend of mine who's uh, IPP and other organization says it's the best job in the world, you know, when if you've moved on. Uh, he put together this great flyer and uh, it basically talks about what we're looking for uh, in a plan. Because it's one thing to tell the Department of Transportation, we don't like your plan. Your plan stinks. Come up with another one. Well, they're going to come up with another stinky plan, as far as I'm concerned, because you know that's uh, sort of uh, what they do. So uh, we have this, where we want uh, a priority bus lane on the, on, uh, uh, for the westbound uh, M14A, so that it'll be on the north side of the street, you know, right going right past uh, Rite Aid and Trader Joe's. Uh, but we want a, a bus lane there because right now. If, if those of you who are more east uh, know that you get on the M14A, you're stuck in the Williamsburg traffic, Williamsburg Bridge traffic, uh, until you can get to Clinton Street. So moving uh, that traffic down to Norfolk Street is just going to delay the bus even further. We think there should be a bus line. Uh, I think it'll, it'll particularly help people who live east of uh, Clinton Street. We also think in order to make room for the bus lane, it makes more sense to consolidate the bike lanes on Grand Street to be a two-way bike lane on the south side of the street. 
Uh, right now, the bike, bike lane that's westbound the north side of the street, you all of a sudden, if you're on that bike lane, those of you who ride bikes know this because I, I do, you all of a sudden you're in the middle of that crazed traffic of people who really want to get onto the Williamsburg Bridge, and it's a little hairy. Uh, so the idea would be to put both lanes on the south side of the street, and I would also clear some of the, the north side for the bus lane, uh, among other things. Uh, we. Uh, this is probably the most radical and to the Department of Transportation, uh, most distasteful plan. We think that uh, most of the streets in excess crossing should become pedest pedestrian safe streets. Uh, because there's loading zones there, there would have to be some times where trucks could make deliveries. But on the whole, we do not want these streets to be through ways to and from the Williamsburg Bridge. Uh, this wasn't designed for that. Uh, I don't think it was ever in the, the envisioned to be that way, uh, at least in terms of the people on Essex Crossing. And uh, the city council actually, I think it was 2017, maybe it was 2019, I'm sorry, Jeremy would know. Uh, they uh, passed law saying they, that the city has to come up with more pedestrian friendly spaces and they have to prioritize uh, places that have, uh, that have lower economic uh, sort of status in terms of the, the population. And since our zip code has uh, about 33,000, 35,000, uh, you know, median income for a household of three, uh, we're great candidates. And so they should do it here. Uh, we don't anticipate the Department of Transportation to want to do this, but we need people to sign up so we can put some pressure on uh, reliable uh, enforcement, and, including random enforcement. Uh, I've been going to these uh, seventh uh, precinct community council meetings. Uh, I know Lee Berman is on the community council. Uh, the captain, uh, Barcia, uh, of the uh, uh, seventh precinct has found some money. You might have noticed that there's uh, traffic enforcement agents out on the corner. Uh, I think someone, is someone asking a question or is that a mic on? Okay. Uh, I can't see who's, who's, who's the, the gallery right now. So anyway, Captain Barcia found some, some money. It's a little sporadic. Uh, it also, uh, they only direct traffic. They don't deal with any like uh, giving out summonses for people parking. Uh, many of you have commented to me about how there's a police car parked off and right in front of Trader Joe's or Rite Aid and the police really don't do anything. Uh, I figure sometimes the car is empty, it's a ghost car, but sometimes there's, there are police in it and I don't understand why they don't get out and you know, uh, enforce uh, some of the infractions. So we're continuing to put pressure on that. Some of it also, uh, you know, when you're talking to these people running for wide office and they say, oh, those are local issues, the traffic are, but you can tell them that there, there's a New York state traffic law that limits how many uh, traffic cameras we can have in New York City. Uh, it limits it to 150 active cameras. So DOT has about 280 cameras around the city and they have them timed to go on and off at certain times. But, uh, and it turns out that something like 41% of the moving violations in New York City are from people outside of New York City. So, uh, you know, when you, if and when you get a chance to talk to any of these people, upside running for, for uh, okay, I see that Chris is here. And if you get any people who are running for state office, ask them about changing the traffic camera laws to allow more cameras. And the last is we do not have any accessible subways within a mile. The closest one, the, actually the closest one is the six train and just the six train on uh, uh, Canal and uh, Lafayette, which is almost impossible to get to if you're in a wheelchair or walk or anything like that. Uh, the, the next one that people could sort of get through with the via bus is the L train stop on First Avenue and 14th Street. Uh, it turns out there's 48 stations in Manhattan that have uh, uh, elevator accessibility, that Essex Crossing is the 27th busiest uh, Essex to Lansing, I mean, 27th busiest uh, uh, subway station in Manhattan as of 2019, you know, before COVID, we can't, you know, the numbers right now are screwy, but the, when things come back, it'll be that busy. 
and there's no accessibility there. I mean, it's terrible. Those of you who've taken that subway station know you, you know, it's uh, if, if you're in a wheelchair or a walker, you're not getting, you're getting there. So we feel that's really important so that people can then take the new improved M14A to the subway and then be able to take an elevator and down instead of having to go all the way to 14th Street. Uh, I'm sorry, Chris is here, so let me try to just wrap this up. I already went through all the proposal. Uh, we have some some progress. There's been uh, more safety barriers put along the bike lanes from South Street to Delancey. If you ride a bike, you might have noticed uh, right uh, up on the between Broome and Delancey, they have fuller bike lanes. They've expanded them a little bit uh, uh, by Trader Joe's, but not much. But apparently down by South Street, they're much better. Uh, there was a pedestrian signal that was like really unreadable because it had turned sideways and one of the traffic working group suggested we contact EOT and they actually fixed it. As I mentioned, Captain Barcia has gotten some tra uh, traffic enforcement agents on the corner. It was a little sporadic. Uh, relentless 311 reports. Uh, I call it relentless advocacy though, though Marion says I'm nagging, but that's okay. Uh, uh, the, uh, they, it seems to be having an effect that they're not parking as much, but that might be wishful thinking. Uh, I'm going again, ask people to get the 311 app. It's great. It's, you don't have to talk to an operator. You don't have to tell them where Manhattan is, uh, et cetera, et cetera. You can do it. You can take a picture. I send pictures, so they have pictures of exactly what's going on. Uh, so, uh, it seems to be a little better. And then uh, one of our colleagues has been talking to uh, Katie Archer from Essex Crossing, the community affairs person, and she's more interested in her efforts because they don't want to see a whole ton of traffic going through uh, Essex Crossing either. They don't want it to be like a highway. So uh, that's basically it. Sorry I went so long, uh, but we've had a lot of stuff since the last meeting. And uh, I hope uh, again that you will join up. I'm going to put the link to the volunteer uh, page on the uh, in the chat, so I expect to see a few more of you here. Thank you. I'm sorry. All of you that are here to report on committees have been given really short shrift the last few months because of all the forums and all the stuff we've been doing, and I appreciate it, and I appreciate the work that's going on. Um, in spite of. I see that Chris is here. So I know that Bill, he, you wanted him to follow up something on the traffic. And then Chris and Julie, in some order, are going to present a vote we're going to take on the Chinatown jail. Chris, hi. Hey, uh, thank you for thank having you me. for coming. Yeah, and sorry, I couldn't be on video. I just, uh, just finished a meeting. But I'll first touch on uh, traffic updates. So uh, my team met with Ed Pankar, who's the Deputy Manhattan Commissioner for DOT, and we used the talking points that Bill gave us uh, on that one pager that the Traffic Committee uh, has been adv advocating for, and we tried to drill on him all those points. Uh, but as we all know, DOT is an agency that is hard to shift, right? It's like tectonic plates or something. And so... We, he, Ed kept on mentioning, oh, with congestion pricing, uh, things are gonna get better. We were pushing him saying that that's not good enough. That's, that's an excuse. We don't know when it's gonna happen. And he was really trying to push on the Norfolk Street plan. And we pushed back on him saying that the community knows this is a failed plan. The community board has voted no on it. Um, and we all know that that's not gonna solve the issue at hand, right? So if anything, it's only gonna increase traffic on Grand Street, increase noise pollution, uh, and increase safety dangers uh, for more streets along Grand Street. And so what we got to is creating a meeting. Initially, at first, he wanted to have uh, us, the community board, and DOT to meet about it. But I pushed him to have at least one or two members from from your traffic committee group to be on. And I think he, he, he's fine with it now. And so what we're gonna do, we're gonna set up a meeting soon in the next few weeks. We're just waiting to hear back from when DOT is available to figure out what we can do. Um, they were really strong on the Norfolk Street plan and we, 
and they want to at least test it for some time. Um, we don't know when they're going to start or how long it's going to be. They said that it could be a pilot program, and if it doesn't work, then they'll think of something else. But that's where we left it. Uh, not as good as I hoped the meeting would go, but um, I think the advocacy just is going to continue. It, it works, right? Like the reason why they spend so much time on this is because of people like Bill uh, who've been kind of pressuring them, whether it's through 311 or through Twitter or through other methods. And so hopefully when we set up that working group with the community board and DOT and a few other people, we can uh, get to a better place. But that's, that's the latest on that. Are, are there any questions? Great, thank you. Yeah, does, I saw a couple of comments in the chat when Bill was speaking. So do, do, do people want to talk about that out loud and then ask any questions of Bill and or Chris? Jeremy has his hand up. Okay, Jeremy. Uh, yeah, thanks. Chris, do you know, uh, so that there is this mandate that the city council passed in 2019 to build out more pedestrian space and, and, and bike lanes yep. and bus lanes. Do you know what the process is to propose specific locations to satisfy those requirements? Yeah, it's something as simple as messaging DOT with, and you could even email our office. Uh, there's an application now for the open street portion of it. Uh, that's on the DOT website and I can share it with Marianne uh, when I get home. Um, and so, yeah, so it's easy sending us an email, sending DOT an, an email and CCing us uh, and, then, and then we could take it from there. Okay, that sounds great because we definitely want to get this plan on their radar while, while that requirement is, is open. Okay. Thanks. Great. Uh, who else? Who I can't access though, here it is. I'll read it if you don't wanna speak. So, um, uh, Sarah, uh, Sarah said the page was great, I agree. Mary Jo, Mary Jo, do you wanna talk, say your chat and get some, um, sure. some feedback I, for it? My um, point on the bike lane is that, um, it would be great if it's, if it's joined together, if it's a protected bike lane, because um, having the protected bike lane on Delancey is actually quite nice. Um, so, and and Bill is correct. When you ride west on on um, Grand Street, it's a it's kind of chaos at the church where you have to cross over and, and mm -hmm. hopefully get the light so that you can do it safely. Um, and then I also said, I mean, Sarah said something about um, Jersey barriers. And I said, what if we just make it planted barrier? So there's more trees. We've lost so many trees in the neighborhood with East River Park. So as many trees as we could get would be great. So that's, those are my thoughts. Great. Are, are either of you interested in joining the committee? I know you have, I know you have sustainability, but it would be great. I love those idea. And I love the idea of planted barriers. I think we should get Mark Levine on our next meeting. So we can ask him how all these trees disappearing have to do with his quest for million trees in Manhattan. Lee, I see your hand up. Yeah, hi, Chris, thanks, thanks for doing this and, and thanks for contacting uh, Ed Pinkar. But it, it, this is more of a comment. You know, Ed Pinkar has been deeply involved in this. Uh, yeah. Hearing from Grand Street Dems, hearing from the community board, hearing about the Grand Street problem for seven years now. And if all he has come up with is let's let's do this Norfolk Street, let's do this as a pilot program. Um, it's really, it's disappointing that this is the best that Ed Pinkar really after everything that he's been given and handed with all of the proposals and all of the studies that this is it, let's try Norfolk Street. It, it, it's really, it, it, it's mind-boggling. And somebody suggested it a couple of minutes ago, maybe we, we need to see what Jonas Rodriguez and just, you know, maybe bypass Ed. Um, but this is more than frustrating, Chris. I, I agree. And I think 
one suggestion I have for this group, and we could do it with our office, is a press conference, a press rally, just to continue to put additional pressure on DLT, because they've studied, as you said, they studied this location for a really long time, uh, pre-pandemic, during the pandemic, and they should have other alternatives out there. And, you know, I don't know if it's whether it's like stubbornness or just inability to make alterations to plants that they're not using one of those alternatives that I feel like would be much long-term solution. Um, you know, development is going to keep on on Grand Street, right? Grand Street Guild has two buildings coming up. Uh, you know, there's still an exit street crossing building that has to go up. And so construction will be in the neighborhood for at least two or three more years. So just proposing Norfolk Street is, is not even a bandage, right? It's just, it's just moving the traffic to probably a worse location now. Anyone else have any more questions or comments about traffic? Thank you all, for all of you. And Chris, can you stay for our next discussion? I know you probably, how, I just wanna say how fabulous is it that we have a city council person that comes out and petitions with us, that shows up at our meetings, that takes on our local issues and um, is here for us. Thank you, Chris. Yeah, exactly. Um, Not all of us, unfortunately. What? Not all of us, unfortunately. We, uh, we're on the other side. We what do you mean? Oh, know. all right. I'm sorry, but. Carlina is our rep. Is our right. Council Got person. it. Got it. Sorry. We didn't redistrict that this year. Next time. Um, so, Julie, do you want to start the conversation about the jail? Do you want me to share the screen and put the letter up? Actually, let me just give a little intro. At our last executive committee, we looked at the issue of the jail uh, going up in Chinatown, and the executive committee unanimously, unanimously took a position opposed to that jail. Um, Julie did a lot of work on putting together a letter for us and looking at, um, you know, some Mayor Adams actually did a video of being against it while he was campaigning and I think has flipped on that. Am I right, Julie? Well, it, it was actually a, a press conference that Chris and his organizers did mm -hmm. in April, right, Chris? And so all I did was lift that segment of what Eric Adams had said as a candidate and, and then put his words across his face <laughs> and also did that with Alvin Bragg as well. Right. Um, so just to remind everybody, so that's been circulated and been repurposed by all sorts of groups um, and, uh, and, and it's putting him on the spot, but I, I don't know. Um, I, I thought that since we had Chris on the line and I'm sure it's one of many things he has to do, perhaps he can fill us in on Sunday and then we can come back to the, the, the club. Because I think um, our group has taken a position about uh, that involves Rikers and I think his group um, does not talk about Rikers, but specifically focuses on Chance, am I right about that, Chris? I think if you wanted to speak about the rally for Sunday. Yeah, definitely. Um, yes, yeah, so we have a massive rally this Sunday at 1 p.m. We're meeting at the southern point of Columbus Park on Wharf Street. Uh, this is to demand uh, Mayor Adams to stop the building of the proposed mega jail at uh, where the current tombs are located at. Uh, if people followed kind of like our newsletters and and Instagram and Facebook, you know, we've been working on this for a really long time. Um, and, you know, the latest update is that about two weeks ago, the construction fence were supposed to go up at the, at the site. And, you know, I asked Eric Adams not to do it and he listened and didn't do it. And I think we have a great opportunity now as a community to go out, unify in demanding that this doesn't get built. And I feel like, the mayor and his whole administration is really listening. So it's really important to get as many people as we can out because I think it just helps. It helps make it easier for him if he chooses to side with the community to say, this is what the community wants. Mm -hmm. uh, and I feel like if we don't have the numbers out on Sunday, then he could say, oh, maybe this is not what everyone wants. So I think, you know, if you can make it, 
uh, great. If you're petitioning for a candidate, there'll be hopefully hundreds and maybe thousands of people <laughs> there so you can collect their signature. Uh, but uh, yeah, you know, I think we're at the 11th hour uh, with, with what's gonna happen. And so if a decision is gonna come out, it's gonna come out in the next few weeks, maybe month. And so I think any little activism that we can do now uh, is gonna really mean a lot uh, on that final decision. Great, Chris, can you repeat where it is and what time? So it's Sunday at 1 p.m. and we're meeting at the Southern portion of Columbus Park, uh, which is Wharf Street. So if you, Wharf and Elizabeth, I think, oh no, Wharf and Mulberry is the intersection. Um, and you'll see a whole bunch of people with signs. And so come out so far, it looks like it's gonna be a nice day to go in March, uh, unlike this past weekend. So <laughs> hopefully everyone can join us. Do you have a visual for that that you can send us? and we can blast it on our Thursday blast? Yes. Yeah. We, we have one, we have I, I think, one. Oh, we have it, okay, sorry. Okay, um, all right. So um, is there anything else, any other questions we have? Chris, I don't know if you need to go or you wanna hang out, um, you know. I, I have to get back on a, a community board one call, but go, uh, yeah. If, if you have any questions, just uh, feel free to email me, DM me, um, well, if we get any more information, I'll, I'll share with Julie or Marion, and hopefully uh, I'll see you guys out there. Thank you so much for coming. Of course. I'll talk to you soon. Have a good night. You too. Bye. Um, so, so today we'd like to ask the, the Grand Street Dem membership to support the resolution that the executive committee had put together. The highlights are as follows. We want um, the, the city to stop the imminent demolition of the tombs. It was scheduled for February of this year. Um, we want, it's basically going to be a, at least a 30 story tall jail. It would be the tallest jail in the world. There's no precedent for this. And uh, what we pointed out in this letter, which is available um, on our website and also through the email that we sent out, is that, you know, I'd like everyone to consider the dangers of, a, of an unprecedented, unprecedented skyscraper jail when there's a fire. And it has happened in the jail in Indonesia when there's a blackout, like a power outage that happened at the Brooklyn Metropolitan Detention Center. And for those of us who lived here through Sandy, the power outage is real, you know? So what happens when uh, there's an emergency evacuation? Oh, by the way, there was a power outage in, in the Brooklyn Metropolitan Detention Center. A judge has already ruled that the 1,700 inmates can sue, all right? So we're creating this jail. We're gonna knock down a building in China, uh, uh, the tombs in Chinatown for, um, a jail that doesn't really increase the number of beds, but it does increase in height. Um, and this is a, we're in a situation where the city is very cash poor. And, uh, and in the meantime, the way the city is doing it is that they're emptying at all these detention centers across the city and just moving everybody to Rikers to overcrowd and overcrowded Rikers. And, and everyone wants to close Rikers, but we all forget the fact that the city has not proven itself to know how to run a jail or, or manage the people who work in the jail. All right, so we want, um, we want the city to consider refurbishing existing detention centers like the tombs or anything else to create immediate help uh, for those who are in, uh, incarcerated. And we want the city to investigate root problems impacting the inmates and, and those who work there. And a lot of those problems were outlined by, the, by Riker's own chief medical officer named Ross McDonald. He had a letter that was very public. Um, not widely circulated, but it is public. And also eight congressional leaders, including Clar Carolyn Maloney, had asked for a federal intervention. There is already a federal intervention, but it seems like it's not enough. So why are we gifting the city more jails to run when we don't know how to run jails? We don't know how to manage the people. So I think the request is to stop and the letter covers that. And we'd like the board, like the membership here to, today to support that resolution so we can send it out. So is there any discussion questions? Um, so does everybody know how to raise your hand uh, in reactions or raise um, or raise a thumbs up? So if you are in favor, uh, so if we if we get this, um, if we can get the club to um, if we can get the club to pass this, we can send it to Eric Adams, we can have it 
put it on our resolution page and have it out before the rally on Sunday. So I would like to ask people to give a vote if they're in favor of passing this resolution as a club. Vote with a raised hand in the participant section. Yeah, raised hand okay. or, th or thumbs or up. Thumbs, or th yeah, either one is good. The problem is the thumbs up disappears after a minute. No. Oh. Okay. Can you do a raise hand instead of the thumbs up? Oh, Ian did both. There you go. <laughs> um, but if you get a thumbs up, go back and do yeah, do the hands up. Yeah. Certainly looks like a majority to me. There's still people, 16 out of 21 people here. So I feel comfortable saying that the Grand Street Dems supports this um, this letter and will um, send the letter to the mayor and we'll add this to our resolution. So now we're at seven, 17. So um, thank you. And Julie, thank you for all your work on this and putting the letter together and really pushing us on this issue. I really appreciate it. Thanks for paying attention, everybody, so. Okay, um, yay. That was good. Okay. Hands down. We have some other um, committee reports from people who have been, again, put off because every meeting there's like something so urgent that we have to do. So um, Sarah, I don't know if you or Mary Jo are going to do the sustainability report. I'm going to be doing the talking and Mary Jo is going to be doing the chatting. <laughs> She's okay, gonna, good. She's going to manage the chat. Okay. Um, and this is this is not a long report. I didn't know how much time we had. So this is a, it's one update and three action items for folks to take if they are so moved. And I hope somebody's moved for some of it. The first update is that you may recall that our club's constituent outreach to council member Marte's office, I'm sorry, he dropped because he gets a little shout out helped lead to a community meeting with the Department of Sanitation representative to help explain the, the compost curbside compost rollout or lack thereof in our neighborhood and what do we do. That was a really good conversation. There were dozens of people from the neighborhood from Lower Manhattan on the meeting, including some of our club members, so thumbs up. What we learned was that Department of Sanitation is on board to bring compost to our neighborhood. The hurdles are logistic, like they don't want to send trucks here if there aren't enough buildings to pick up from. And so they're there waiting for the funding to get the trucks here or they're waiting for more people to sign up. But basically, there are enough buildings here um, that are interested in the program and will support the program that when it's our turn, we're kind of in line. But plot twist. Mayor Adams a couple of weeks ago came out and said he's suspending the entire rollout of the compost program. So no more like curbside compost is, is in the works. So this is in complete contradiction to everything he ran on. He ran on as a, he ran as a strong climate candidate. He ran on a recycling platform. You may know he's called himself vegan, which kind of leads one to the idea of plant-based foods and thinking about plant-based waste, food waste. But no, he's rolled this out and said that he's here. He stopped the rollout. He said that this is because it will save some money. I understand that this is about the compost program is about 0.02% of the city's budget. I don't think there's a huge cost savings in here. Um, what can we do? We can go back to council member Marte and flag it. Actually, um, Brad Hoyleman in the state legislature is it put through legislation um, to require curbside composting, but I'm getting ahead of myself. What we can do is contact the mayor's office and write down our support for, write, it, it's, it's a form, but we can write our support for the compost pro program. From whatever lens is important to you, why, are you, why do you want this? I want it from a climate perspective. Just put something down, it gets tracked. It's better than doom scrolling, okay. That's your first action item. Second action item is at the state level. We're going from small city level, we're gonna go state and then we're gonna go bigger. The state assembly and the state Senate um, are working right now on finishing their budgets along with Governor Hochul. What we need to do, both, both houses have passed really good climate um, 
legislation, but what we want to do is go bigger and set up funding at the state level to allow climate justice initiatives to get funded year over year over year. So we don't have a problem, we don't run into the problem where we have these really strong mandates, which we do, but they're not funded and therefore it just sort of dies a sad, lonely death. So we want to ensure funding going forward. There is a tool that Mary Jo is putting through, which is through the, the smart people at New York Renews, the coalition group, which is a tool for calling um, calling state leaders, um, Andrea Cousins, Carl Hasty, and Governor Hochul, demanding proper funding, ongoing funding for climate initiatives. Um, again, there's, there's a script here. Um, you can customize it any way you want. The beautiful thing is, and I love this part, you don't have to be a policy expert. You don't have to know exactly what all the, the bits of legislation say. You don't have to be expert in green technologies or what electricity standards mean. You just have to make this call. There's a script, there are prompts, you can adjust it. I recommend you say you're Grand Street Democrats Club member because putting the name of our organization only gives us some visibility. It also indicates, um, kind of community support behind this idea. It's not a lone wacko. It's you know not a wacko at all, but it's, it's people with um, an organization behind us. Um, you don't have to be expert in policy. I love, I, I'll say that again, because I love it. Um, you just have to have a reason to want to call. And maybe your reason is that you're a parent. Maybe the reason is you're, you are disappointed that our park is going away in the name of coastal resiliency as sea level rises. Maybe your reason is, is that you like to garden and the flowers are coming up too soon. Maybe your reason is you like to ski and there's not the snowpack. Maybe the reason is you like to bike and there are too many days where it's now too hot and the air quality is too bad. Um, then it would be different from what it was 15 years ago. So you don't have to be an expert. You just have to make this call. Um, I did it before this, this conversation. It took a total of three and a half minutes. I set the timer on my phone very quick. You don't have to talk to a real person if you call after hours. So if you're nervous about talking to a staffer, you, like do it now and you just leave a voicemail and it gets tracked. Um, so that's action item number two. Hold on, wait one second. That's I'm not working. The, the, the link isn't working, so we're going to have to update you on that link. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'll, okay. I'll, I'll send that after I, I'm done spieling. Um, and the final, the final link is um, the final action. It's the same idea at the Senate level. So you might say, why would I call Senator Schumer and Senator Gillibrand on climate stuff? Because they're already really good. Like they're already kind of voting the way that we think they should vote on climate stuff. They can, well, first of all, doing it tells them that we are interested in this and that we want them to do it. So pressure is always good. We also can at, put into our ask a request that they work with their colleagues in the Senate who might be less inclined to, to work toward um, climate legislation. And I'm thinking of a man whose name rhymes with mansion um, who, who might not be as on board as some others. Um, this is another tool, it's, it takes me a minute and a half. Um, every time I do it, I, I make this call like every week. It's, I'm, I'm a nerd and I'm, you know, a, a, but pushing at the levels, levers of power gets them to move and we have to make our voices clear. Um, this is another super easy one. Is it in the chat, Mary Jo? Are we cool with, with call for climate? Yes. There it is, okay. Um, so this is, the script is around the Build Back Better Act, which is, if you follow this, you may know that it's it's stalled. The, the separate pieces may be what goes forward. The climate pieces are looking pretty good for movement forward. So um, speak up and go to your senators. That's it for your three action items. I hope you take maybe one, maybe two, maybe all three. Um, any questions on this? Okay, I will drop the, the proper URL in the chat for, for the state level action. Sorry about that. Any questions from anybody? How, um, how optimistic do you feel about this having an effect? Most people don't call their elected officials uh, so just the, the fact of doing it means we are noisier 
and getting this idea across. It certainly mm-hmm. doesn't hurt. Um, there, there's more actions to take, but this is kind of, of course, um, this is kind of a quick one. If we want as a group to request a constituent meeting um, at, at the state or, or Senate level, Melissa's nodding, um, you know, we can do something like that. And I'd be happy to, to try to work on that. I did with another group um, try to schedule a meeting with Senator Gillibrand's office, but didn't get anywhere with it um, on, on some of this, but we can try. We can keep going. We did Sorry. have a meeting with Yuleen's office um, on, on exactly this uh, like three weeks ago. Melissa was there. And? She's, she's down with it. But, but, but then she requested that we go to Carl Hasty and Andrea Stewart Cousins and, and Governor Hochul to, mm-hmm. to move the, the bigger levers. I saw a request. Do we have all the information? I saw a request from Julie for a short paragraph on this so we could put it up on the website with okay. these with these contacts. Mm-hmm. Or I Melissa, have you, you have notes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I just need that. <clears throat> Terrific. So we'll we'll get that up. So hopefully it'll get more people will see it. Thank you very much for doing that work. I appreciate it. I know we all appreciate it. Um Okay, we also have uh, a report. I don't know, Tommy or, Ma- or Mary Jo, who's going to do the report on what's happening at Corlears Park in East River? Tommy, I think you should do it. And if you need me to add stuff, I will. Yeah. Um, just a quick update. Um, every time we speak, uh, the goalposts get moved sometimes. Um, you may have heard that the city changed plans somewhat on cutting down uh, more trees now in Corlea's hook than originally proposed. They're looking at removing all the cherry trees, ironically, on Cherry Street. Um, and uh, the argue, you know, their reasoning is that the replacement bridge for Corlea's hook requires that those trees now be removed. They're slated to currently remove along with the need for the parallel conveyance uh, about 50 trees in Corlears and along the, the, the walkway. Um, it's now been moved again till April 4th. And uh, we all do owe a debt of gratitude to Chris, uh, who has really stepped up as the, our council person and has uh, shown up, tried to intervene, and spoken up. But what he's not getting is the support of his colleagues. And that's why, you know, we talk about the importance of primaries and petitioning and elections, but we really have an opportunity here to change the landscape a little and get Chris some help, which he is not getting overall. Um, You know, some of the mitigation that we've seen, the passive lawn is usually underwater now. It's recently been discovered by the migrating Canadian geese who have left their marks all over the passive lawn and it doesn't seem there's anybody to clean it up. Um, And um, recently we've been complaining about all the dirt piles you see. Uh, You might have seen uh, while they did all the destruction, they created a lot of piles of dirt. Well, we've been wondering and complaining about why they haven't covered them or removed them. And uh, just last Friday, uh, for the first time, they covered some of the uh, large uh, piles of debris and unbeknownst, uh, and then on Saturday with a very mild storm, all the tarps were blown off. And today I thought they would repair the damage and recover the piles but they didn't. And just so people are aware that in, you know, before the park was destroyed and during the EIS, the city did a study of the soil content of the area, particularly the area around and below the Williamsburg Bridge. And their reports indicate um, exceedance of acceptable levels of lead, mercury, arsenic, and a variety of benzo compounds, all in violation 
of, of, of acceptable norms. And there's been absolutely nothing done to mitigate why all the destruction is done, except these two, two tarps that were put on on Friday and then were destroyed on Saturday. So one of our things is we uh, continue to try to do the oversight, which is not being done. Um, we get two shots every month. One at the community advisory group, where um, the city PR people uh, appear. And then again, at community board three at the park committee, where the same PR people appear. We never get a chance to talk to the actual city agencies. And uh, on the issue of air quality, for example, we only get reports quarterly. We've asked continuously to have access to the air quality data so that we can see it on a real-time basis. And we've been denied. And the fox is watching the chicken coop. Uh, we also, and the CAG actually all asked originally that the air quality, um, this, the contractor was required to hire an independent air quality engineer. However, we ask that the community be able to hire that independent engineer, as opposed to that person reporting directly to the contractor, and even that was uh, denied. Um, we are undertaking our own efforts, um, and maybe Mary Jo, you could just fill in on a minute or two, because um, we've created an organization for a Lower East Side Breeze, and we've actually bought some of our own equipment and are attempting to do our own monitoring, um, but it's complicated. We don't can't do it as intensely as we would like to, but we are attempting. And Mary Jo, just maybe let people know what we are doing. Okay, I tried to. Um, oh wait, no. Here's there's the reason why. Um, so what we did with um, East River Park actually, we raised money um, with them, and then we developed our own group to monitor the air quality in the neighborhood. And we purchased um, both um, stationary air quality monitors and walk around types. The, um, I'll put this in the chat. The stationary ones are purple air monitors and you can check the map and see, sorry, I've got so many windows open. It's gonna take me a minute to find this. You can check the map and you can see our monitors in the neighborhood. Um, and this, you can, it, this should open up to show lower Manhattan and into Jersey City and Brooklyn. There's also um, a map here, um, it's called Air Now, which you can use in conjunction with this because sometimes there are spikes that are shown in the, um, in the air quality and it looks bad. But if you actually look farther out, you can see that it's not just here. On, it's, in many respects, we have to say it's good, it's bad, but. It's not necessarily coming from the construction site. It's it's regional, and you can the second link you can actually see um, the bad air. It comes up as yellow. Um, the the other thing we hire we with the handheld monitors. They're it's called Atmo Tube, and we've done walk arounds in the neighborhood. Um, I've discovered that my kitchen actually has horrific air quality, but when I go outside, um, the air quality is great. Even during construction, I've walked over to where the amphitheater was when they were taking down the trees and when they were digging up the ground. I've walked um, across at Houston and down when they were actually paving that, um, the walkway from the, um, from the river over to the FDR drive. They were paving and I stood right there. The air quality was, was decent. It was much better than my kitchen. Um, so from what I've seen, the air quality is not that bad. I'm not an expert in this, but I, this is what I've seen to date. Um, so if people have questions, I can try to answer them. Um, oh, and also there's a, there's another website here that takes a lot of um, different um, monitors and puts them all together uh, and has a, a, a sort of a combined reading. And one of our monitors just keeps not showing up on this one. Marion, you're muted. Hello. 
Marianne? <coughs> okay. Am I good now? Yeah, I'm so, I'm so sorry. I was trying to copy all this down so we had a record of, of how to go back and get all this. Jen, um, Jen, what, Jen, send that to you also. I, I right. just wanted to raise one, one more thing that was brought to our attention today, the safety issue, is that people should realize the north end of the park, north of Houston Street, is um, accessible. However, the uh, uh, somebody was mugged recently, just last week, on the Esplanade, there is no patrol or access by the NYPD to the northern end of the park because there are multiple gates that are locked by the construction company. So the, basically, north of Houston Street right now um, is not being patrolled or uh, the NYPD does not have access. Tommy, they the have the bicycle patrols. They could send bike, bike cops out there. Well, I think we should let the captain <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> know, know that because apparently uh, when the person was mugged, um, the NYPD could not get to the location. Hmm. Who do we talk to about bike patrols? Um, seventh Precinct, I guess. I haven't okay. seen I haven't seen NYPD on bike in I don't know how long. It's usually riot patrol stuff, but. Um, <laughs> well, that's what we need. I guess we need. So riots. they can't get into the park with a car? No, because they, they need the gates to be opened by the construction company. And after hours, there's like only one security guard. Um, and I think he's at, he, he may be at Montgomery Street, but mm -hmm. then he, I don't know how he gets it. You know, unless the, the cops bring him. He has no way. There are multiple gates up at Houston Street. Hmm. Same problem with the NYPD, which I mentioned. You know, there were unfortunately a couple of jumpers off the bridge, and the and the, the FDNY could not get to the. FDNY. Couldn't get there, right? Bill, you had your hand raised. Yes, I was just going to say. Uh, you know, the seven precinct has a community council. Uh, it's when you actually get Captain Barcia in the same room as you. Uh, so, uh, and they're meeting tomorrow night at the seventh precinct. They're in person, but people wear masks. Uh, you know, we, it's been slow, but we're starting to wear them down about like the, mm -hmm. the traffic working group. The idea that they could have bicycle police or motorcycle police or scooter police or smart car police that can get through, you know, small things. Uh, it's, you got to show up and assert it and, and say something about it. By the way, no bicycle, nobody could get through because the gates are locked. You couldn't, no, bicycle patrols couldn't get through either. So how do bad like, guys get there? They come, you can get there from the north end. The only way the NYPD accesses the park is through Montgomery Street. So the gates are at Houston Street. No, you Tommy, they could go over at Houston. You could ride a bike down there. You could ride a motor. Oh, a bike, yes. Yeah. But you can't get yeah. there with a patrol car. Mm -hmm. No, no, I know. Uh, no. Listen, I, if it wasn't in person, I might go. I'm not sure I'm going to make it in person to the 7th Precinct. Mm -hmm. Catherine and then Lee. Yeah, I just had a question for Mary Jo. Um, on on the monitors, do they do they what do they measure? Do they just measure particulate matter? Do they measure VOCs and um, lead and things like that? The purple airs do not measure VOCs. The they um, measure PMs, PM two point five and PM ten. I think PM one. Um, the handheld monitors, which is mine, I knocked off the counter and I think it's broken. It does. It does me measure VOCs. So we, when we go, when we do the walkabouts in the neighborhood, um, we've been able to see that. Okay. What about in lead? my kitchen? What about heavy yeah. metals? No. Yeah. That's what I, I we just okay. not use abbreviations because a lot of people. Oh, don't. sorry. Volatile organic compounds. Oh, okay. Thank and PM you. is particulate matter. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you, Lee. Yeah. Just to follow up with uh, what Bill suggested. If we're able to get a bunch of people to show up in person tomorrow night, 
uh, the captain will listen. If a bunch of people, if we can get 10 or more than 10 folks to show up and demand that there be coverage and, and patrols, uh, both on the FDR Drive, on the Esplanade, and in Corlears Hook Park, where, by the way, there was, I believe it may have been an anti-Asian uh, hate crime that okay. occurred this past week uh, in Corlears Hook Park. Right. Get him uh, on, on record being asked for patrols. I think he will have a hard time to not do that. So it's tomorrow at the 7th Precinct at 7.30 p.m. Who can go? I'll go. I might go. I'll try. I'll try. <laughs> okay, good. I, I think it's really important, Mary Jo, that you and Tommy are there because you have more information than any of us, if it's at all oh, possible. Oh, 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 no, I must say, the last time I saw the captain, I was trying to serve him with a temporary injunction. <laughs> well, we'll surround you. <laughs> Don't worry about that. <laughs> Just don't walk in front of him on the street. <laughs> so um, anything else on this that we should know about? Is no. there anything? I, I, I thought I heard that there was another um, demonstration at Corlears Hook Park coming up. Is that right? Oh. Um, well, you know, there was one last week. No, the press conference. Right. That got some press. And there's supposed to be another one on the 4th. Yeah, I would expect the people that the day they're going to try to cut down those cherry trees, I'm expecting people to show up. Oh, man. Okay. So who else is going tomorrow night? I'm going to try. Good. Catherine, Taj, Bill, Marion, who else? I'm not going tomorrow night. Sorry. Oh, you're not. Okay. <laughs> I have a next week. Next week is a con Corey Park, the fourth, the twenty first. The twenty first. Taj. Taj, what, Catherine? What? No, it's. I'm just saying, telling Taj that's been moved. It's been moved to April. Yes, 4th. Catherine. It's been moved to April fourth. Oh, they, they, we moved to April fourth. Not next week. No, not next week. Okay, um, so we have we have a lot of advocacy to do if we're going to change things um, in our community. I don't know. I'm tired just thinking about all of it. Um, now, as I said in the beginning, our next meeting will be May 9th. So it's a, it's. I, I guess what I'd really love is to hear people to committing to some um, actions that they're gonna do between now and then besides petitioning. So we have to, we're tabling on Saturday, 11 to two in front of Seward Park Extension. We're meeting at Grand Street Guild from five to seven to bring signed petitions in. Uh, hopefully if everybody gets out and gets some signed, we'll have enough that we can kind of move on from that. But if not, we have another two, two weeks, three weeks, at two and a half weeks of possibilities for petitioning. Um, if, um, okay, so yeah, if everybody could get at least 20 signatures, that would be great. Some people get more than 20. And Kenny is not here. I wanted to give a shout out to Kenny because he's been getting an amazing amount of signatures. Um, go to the jail rally on uh, Sunday that's being put together by Chris Marte. Um, so we have petitioning, we have jail rally, we have call local and state about what's happening with sustainability. What, what am I forgetting? Um, federal too. What? And the federal. And the federal. So yeah, that's, and that's all. Do you, are we gonna have all that up or I have, I've started a page with all that chat. Um, and I and I would like us to spend just a few minutes. Um, let's say we can go till eight thirty, if that's okay with everyone. Thinking about what's coming up. So when we come back on May 9th, not that we're going away, but um, we're going to be looking at uh, the primaries. Last year, thanks to Julie, and we did a great um, a great event at Hester Park. 
that Hester Street Park to um, kind of get everybody kicked up for the primary. We want to do some walk to the polls, stroll to the polls, um, and, and really start to get, you know, get that happening. So I would love to hear ideas from people besides doing an event like that. Um, we have not had an event except for that last year. We were going to have a fundraiser and then we got, and then Omicron hit and we canceled it because we thought it wasn't safe. I don't know, now that spring's coming up, maybe it will get a little safer to do something like that and have a fundraiser. I'd love for people that if that speaks to you to just start you know, forming a group to start planning those things and really getting us going for the spring. And we'll all be available by email from now until May 9th. And finally, I'd like us to think about um, if we want to start a group, a committee, whatever we want to call it, to start working on um, all the hate crimes that are going on and to start to take a stance. And I don't, I mean, I almost feel like it's back to like the vigilante days that we need to start walking the streets and keeping them safe. I, that's me being like, you know, over the top, but I don't feel like it's okay for us to just keep sitting back and watching people who are homeless get shot. Um, our mayor talks about putting them back in shelters. Obviously that's not where they wanna go. So we're gonna kick them out of the subway and then have them shot in the streets. We, um, there's just a lot of crime going on. I, I can't be alone in being concerned about what it means to live in this neighborhood right now, in New York City right now, and I'm not the one at highest risk. Catherine. Yeah, I was just going to men mention because we've had several, after, um, after the murder in Chinatown, in particular, the, you know, there have been several demonstrations that have occurred in Chinatown. And there's also one group that we might check out and maybe want to emulate. But they're doing a lot of, um, there are a lot of younger people, you know, in their 20s or so. And they just post around saying anybody who wants someone, needs someone to walk them somewhere or need, feels the need to have someone, you know, some someone accompany them that they give them a um you know a place to call or to text and they'll have people show up so maybe you know given the fact that we've had some really terrible incidents around here too it's something we could think about and see if we can recruit people to try and do the same thing because anybody who works late and if you're walking home at night from the subway or something like that it can get scary mm -hmm. Was that one of those guys who got their uh, who got their um, neck slashed? That was walking a bunch of women home. Were those friends of his, or was he one of the people you're talking about, Catherine? I'm not sure. Does but... anyone else know? Um, so I love I love that idea doing something like that. Um, maybe. Maybe if is anyone interested in trying to figure this out um, and we could set up something before our next general meeting to throw some ideas out and start to um, be more active. I mean, the police aren't doing it. You know, I mean, it just feels like if we don't step up and do something, uh, Taj, you have your hand up. <laughs> Sorry about that, y'all. How about the East River Park group can join? That'd be great. You think people would be interested? Yeah. I'm going to show a question. How about the East River Park group could join? Yeah. You could tell, you could tell the whole, you could tell the whole group that Sarah would be there, Sarah and Emily Johnson. Mm-hmm. Well, let's reach out and see if that's something they're interested in. It's a great idea. I I I have a question. Maybe we could. We used to have auxiliary police in this community, and I, know. I don't think I've seen them since COVID. Lee, do you know if they're still around? I believe they are, but I I my assumption is that they're really only doing um, major events. 
that they're not, I have not seen them out on patrol in yeah. since before COVID. I think they're, they're out at, you know, uh, the half marathon and, and citywide events. Uh, but that's a, a great question to ask tomorrow if anybody can, uh, can go to the uh, council meeting um, and ask. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, Valentina. Yeah, I, 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 I somewhat agree with Lee. That's what I was thinking. That probably, um, because you're talking about criminal behavior, that you probably want to talk to the police department to see what kind of ideas they have about what we as a community can do as a community group, as well as what we as a community can do with the police um, that they think might be um, advantageous. You know, I just keep thinking about, you know, some kind of signage around that, you know, we care for all of our people or something at, at various places, something that says we care about the people in this neighborhood, you know, you know, down on crime, up on people or something, mm -hmm. you, know, mm -hmm. you know, just something that says that we're thinking about this and we don't want this here. But I, I think the big issue, though, is to talk with the police department about working together and what they think is, is something that might work. So that's another issue to bring up tomorrow night at the at the precinct meeting. Good, thanks. Catherine, do you still have your hand up or you didn't put it down? No, I put it down, but then I put it back up. Oh, okay. Well, then. <laughs> yeah. I'm just wondering because a lot of places where they have, although it depends on how many stores are open late at night, but have like safe havens. Um, a lot of areas have that. I don't know if it's ever been done over here, but it's something else you can talk to the police about and See me like a storefront, and if you're walking home and you feel like someone's following you, it's some place you can go and like that. Yeah, I mean, it seems like a lot of places where these crimes have happened are very dark, very yeah, yeah. not a lot of stores in these areas. Right. So it's something to check out. Mm -hmm. um, again, I'm going to really encourage people to show up tomorrow night. It sounds like there's a lot we can talk about. Um, and finally, um, Julie, do you want to? talk about the proposals was that you or melissa who just chatted about that okay well i think that was me to you oh yeah okay that can you just raise that i i guess we'll just to um plant the seed in everyone's head i think we're looking once we're done with the rush of dealing with petitioning and and immediate jail stuff um uh, we're looking at creating some kind of proposal submission uh, for the rest of the year to solicit ideas from the general membership on what we can do. Maybe the executive committee is going to figure out how much money to set aside, and that could be an opportunity for us to put some of our own GSD money behind the community. Um, we might look at the way city council members like Christopher Martin and Margaret Chin have done their what is a participatory budgeting process and do this for the next half of the year. So I had volunteered to sketch that out. Um, I hope to get it done soon. And then and then that'll give give anyone here and others a chance to sort of spend some time coming up with an idea, a structure, the amount of money they need and how they would go about it. So big or small. Um, and then we could we could start putting some money behind some good work in the community. Uh, and it could be this, it could be a safe haven, but we kind of need a, a leader to get behind those ideas and, and take us with them. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so if we just could have some submissions, you know, we have some new membership. So we have a, a little bit of money that we could, would really like to put it back into the community. This would be a really nice way to do it. Um, so uh, I don't know if you remember when um, the city did it and Chris Marte did it, put basically put something up on the website where people could submit ideas. So maybe between now and the next meeting, we could start putting that up so people could start submitting some ideas about ways, you know, I've, I know it's come up new trash cans, some painting, safe havens. There's a lot of things we need in this neighborhood. Planting, uh, planted barriers for bike lanes. Um, $1,000 would probably do a lot of nice planted barrier. Uh, for example. So let's start coming up with those. And um, Julie, can you just make a link on the um, 
on the website where people can start going to that and submitting ideas. It doesn't have to be as fancy as what Chris did, but it can just be the ideas. And then we can start looking at them. Yeah, I, I will uh, I will work on that. Fabulous. <laughs> um, but I, I also wonder, do we need the this group to vote on how much money to set aside or do we not need to worry about that now? Let's let's see where we are by then. That's six weeks away. Let's see if we can plan a fundraiser. If we stop getting COVID spikes and we can raise some more money, then maybe we can don't, you know, devote more money than we think now to it. And um, but I like the five hundred to a thousand dollar idea. I think that's pretty much what's in our range. And then depending on how many ideas we get, we could it'll be less or less or more on that range, depending on what comes up and what people would like to do. It could be to clean up Montgomery Park. Like there could be all sorts of stuff that people could right. use money for. Right. Exactly. Okay. I, I have to think about how to set that up. Okay. <laughs> and I I can work with you on that if you like. Hi, Jeremy. I need help on the web. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought he just got up. Okay. Get yeah. petitions. Get petitions. Bring them in Sunday. Uh, Catherine, sorry. Sorry. That's oh. okay. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm going to bring up that the idea of maybe taking, you know, that letter that we've got to start on, maybe putting it out. Once we have an idea of the things we want to work on, maybe we can expand it so we can stuff a lot of the buildings so the community sees what we're up to and maybe get more people into meetings and get more people involved in some of the things that we're letting them know we're involved in. And of course, put the link on to our site. Did you wait? Let me just make sure I heard the front part. You, you're suggesting a letter that encourages the members of the community to submit. Is that what you're saying, Catherine? Well, I'm I'm encouraging the members of the community to be aware of Grand Street Dems and let them know what we're doing. It's kind of more of an advertisement about us to have some of the issues and the things that we're concerned about and maybe stuff it. We have a, a start on it. Mm -hmm. And I just think it'd be good to get let people know what we're doing if they don't know we're here because people are, you know, somewhat oblivious sometimes. So I think if we if we stuff the buildings and we have a link to the site so that we might get more members and more ideas from different people in the community. So we have a draft letter. It needs to be edited and then it needs to be printed and then we need volunteers to put it under the doors. So if there's somebody that can put together a group to take care of those things, we can, Grand Street Dems can afford the printing. Um, and the executive committee could do editing. Um, then it becomes about who's gonna get the printing done and who's gonna get the volunteers. All right, Tommy said he had people. I, well, I have people who uh, I contacted who have some kids who are willing to get paid to do this, so. Um, where we can't do it ourselves, um, I think we can manage to pay some kids to do it. Tommy, can you come up with a proposal about how many kids and how many hours and how much money that's going to cost? No, but <laughs> you know, I, I, I think it's dependent on what, what we can't do ourselves. I mean, for example, in the past, we've been able to do East River for the most part. We, we really need to know what has to be done. Um, where we can't, what we can't do. For example, I know we've had problems with Hillman or Amalgamated and maybe even some Seward Park area. So once we know what we need to do, um, for example, Sandra Struthers and others said they had kids who, you know, I think if we pay them mm -hmm. a, a fair amount, um, they'll, they'll do it and uh, it'll get done. So can you at least begin organizing a group of kids and volunteers? So if we get this done, we know it can happen. I don't want to spend time on it unless I know we can get it out. And I, I don't have a moment in my world right now. Jeremy? I, I, we, we, can definitely, we can definitely edit it out. We've, we've gotten flyers yeah. out before, and I can definitely help pull together the volunteers who have done that with us before. And uh, yeah, we've got more kids who can help out too. <clears throat> we'll okay. have several things to get out before the primary. I'm sure there will be friend-to-friend -friend letters we want to get out. There will be a 
uh, endorsement sheet that we want to get out from Grand Street Dems. There, there, there are a few things like this that I think are going to be coming up this spring, and we can definitely do it. And yes, I'll help. But I, I, I right, thank you. I do think it would be worth it for us to figure out how much it costs and you know what is involved with having non-volunteers distribute leaflets because we have so many things that we want people to volunteer for and if we can you know if we can find out that like oh here's a group of teenagers who are willing to do it for two hundred dollars and they get it done in one day like that seems right. to me money well spent it's giving kids some um money and it's like getting you know a task off our plate so maybe we would actually be yeah. it would be better for us to start figuring out how to pay someone to do it than to always mm -hmm. relying on on volunteer power if we feel like we have the money i i, I would, as somebody who has shoved letters under doors many times i'd be happy to like um i'd be happy to start not doing you'd, you'd that. be happy to pay leo I'd be I'd be happy to pay someone. I'm not sure Leo is the best <laughs> candidate, but um, I, I, I will I will follow up. Let me ask a critical question. Since I don't know if we have a finance committee, we do have some money, right? Yes. <laughs> yes, and we have an executive committee. So we don't have a finance committee, but we can no. take it on. If you start giving us some general idea, I, I, I will. I will. I will get you a number in the next few days. I will put the letter that has been created up on the um, Google Drive and I'll ask the executive committee to start um, working on it. We'll get it to where we want it to be and then we'll pass it around to make sure okay. nobody wants to do any, any more edits to it. Is that it, acceptable? It's the CR code. <laughs> what? Oh, the CR code. Yeah, that's Which the easiest you? part, <laughs> getting yeah. a pretty QR code. We'll, we'll do it. Yeah, the QR code. Yeah, we'll put a QR code on it. It'll lead people to the website. Um, it, it needs updating just based on what we've talked about here tonight in terms of some of the things that we're going to be doing. Right. Okay, I will take care of that in the next day or two, putting it up and um, making it available to the executive committee. Great. Fair enough? Yep. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for um, a lot of interesting things going on and a lot of committed work. I appreciate all of you. Thank you for all the work you Thank do. Thank you for all the work, M-A-R-I-O-N. Thank you, Tosh. <laughs> I'm doing, okay. I, I gotta keep up my job. At, I gotta keep working at Park Defender at the East River Park community. Cool, okay. Everyone, good night. Good night. Good night.